And with that, Rattler fans, we welcome you to Bill Greehy Arena, Boba and Anna Meyer Court, the venue for here tonight. I'm Joe Rodriguez, joined by Brian McLeod as your St. Mary's Rattlers. Two and three so far on the season. Try to get their home cooking going up against the Texas A&M University Kingsville Javelinas. Three and three on the season. And as I mentioned before, Brian McLeod on joining me. Brian. Time for the Rattlers to get that home cooking going just a little bit. Very nice crowd in attendance considering it is dead week. And what do you expect out of this Rattlers squad at home? Well, I look for the Rattlers, Joe, to continue, as you said, their home cooking. They got back on the winning track this past Sunday in their victory over Midwestern State University. And they were sparked by... Chris Miner coming off the bench, leading the team in scoring with 11 points. St. Mary's, a very defensive-oriented team, taking on a high-octane offense in A&M Kingsville. And with that, we are underway. Yeah, and these two teams, they've already met, met up once before the year. Texas A&M Kingsville took that one on their home floor, 76-71 to 71 to score. As you mentioned, very high scoring this Havelina team. They average 80 points per a game. The Rattlers more defensive oriented. Is it something where we're going to have to see the Rattlers try to slow down that tempo, use more of this clock? What should be the game plan going into today? If you're St. Mary, stick to what you know. That is hard-nosed defense and milking the clock, working for the best shot like that one right there as Bolton finds... Isaiah Matthews down low for the first points of the game. Two to nothing for the Rattlers. Let's go ahead and meet the starters. For the Rattlers, Marvin Benny and Marvin Witt in at the guard spots. J.J. Bolton will be the small forward, number 21 in there. Isaiah Matthews down low. He already has the first basket as that one's answered back. A three ball for the Javelinas. And in the middle, it'll be Ryan Thomas, the senior. On the other end for the Javelinas, Troy Jones will be starting along with Brandon Etine. Dwan Wright will also be in there along with Jordan Jar and Jamar Goodwin. Three to two, Bolton with the ball, top of the key, backdoor cut by Witt as he left his feet, now settles for the jumper. That one out of bounds off of the Javelinas as Ryan Thomas was in there fighting for the offensive board. Good play there by the Rattlers. Witt unable to get a clean hold on the pass and opted for the much difficult fadeaway. Luckily for the Rattlers, they get the ball back. Fresh 35 on the clock. Benny will set it up up top. And the key step between the Javelinas and the Rattlers in that first matchup, St. Mary's, they only managed to shoot 37.9% from the field. They were even worse from three. They only shot 16%. I'm going to look for a drastic improvement on the whole floor as Marvin Benny gets the easy one in for two. And it looks like... Had a whistle blown, maybe a warning of a delay of game as a Rattler touched the ball after it went through the hoop, but just a warning right there, four to three. On the Javelinas in very high octane offense. They have four players that average in double figures, according DJ Weathers, who is not a starter. He's their sixth man. Goodwin with the ball, passes it over to Jones. See the Rattlers in the straight up man-to-man -man here to start. They're not afraid to go to the zone, but they much prefer this man. That one forced up, no box out for St. Mary's, and it's an easy two for Jones off of the board. Good positioning there by Jones, able to elevate for the tip-in as he gets his first field goal of the night. Here's Witt, right free throw line extended. It's the screen from Matthews, pops up the jumper from free throw line and sinks it for two. And you gotta love those easy jumpers off the screens, kind of get you into your rhythm so you don't have a repeat of the shooting performance against the Javelinas this last time. Rattlers early on much more efficient offensively as good defense there by Thomas and Bolton combining to thwart that opportunity. But last touch by JJ, it'll stay here with the Javelinas. Yeah, good job there by Bolton, the small forward going up against the center in Jones. Bolton, he might just be this, he might be a small forward for this team, but that doesn't deter him. He actually leads this Rattler team in rebounds and he gets the steal there. Good hands there by Bolton as now the Rattlers look to counter. I like the amount of screen so far out of the Rattlers. Here's Matthews, baseline move, easy for two. And you see the Rattlers taking the eight to three lead here. Slicing, dicing into the defense, but a step too many, perhaps. 
There'll be a turnover, and the Rattlers very active on defense so far. Case of the happy feet there as St. Mary's able to force yet another turnover. And as we see Justin Alexander checking into the game, Ryan Thomas will head out. Justin Felipe will head in for the first time as well, along with the before-mentioned DJ Weathers. Out of the game, Jones and Atine. Here's Witt, the screen from Alexander. Matthews again, good position. Matthews again for two. Matthews bursting ahead with six points, single-handedly outscoring the Javelinas thus far in the early stages. I like what I'm seeing from Isaiah. Quick first move oh. as Witt able to draw the offensive foul. <laughs> and that was on Goodwin as his arm elevated and shoved Marvin out of the way. St. Mary's clicking on all cylinders right now. Yep, good job by Witt positioning himself. And the thing I like, look at all the St. Mary's Rattlers off the bench after drawing that offensive foul. These guys very hungry to avenge the early season loss. Here comes Benny up the floor. He's going to be checked by Weathers. Bolton now, left free throw line extended. Looking for Alexander, good entry pass, but nothing doing there. And that one eventually taken away by Felipe. Up the floor the other way we come, Weathers with the ball. Little baseline jumper, no good. And two Rattlers trip over each other there, and the rebound not able to be corralled. Media timeout, the first one of the night here to be taken. The Rattlers doubling up the Javelinas, 10 to 5. With 12 premier institutions across four states, the members of the Heartland Conference are proud partners of their communities and NCAA Division II. We are committed to the academic and athletic success of our student athletes. The Heartland Conference offers a vibrant championship experience with schools that are nationally competitive, engaged with their communities, and supported by hundreds of thousands of fans who promote a positive game environment. To learn more about the Heartland Conference, visit us at heartlandsports.org. Choose Division II. Choose the Heartland Conference. And welcome back, Rattler fans. 10 to 5. The Rattlers surging forward. Looks like St. Mary's are going to stay with the same five go that they had going into the media timeout. A fresh 35 on the clock for the Javelinas. They'll be inbounding on the Rattlers baseline. And we see a, uh, a very seasoned Rattler squad. This one swung around. Finally, the best shot is taken. No good. And up, oh, long rebound off of the long shot. And no one was boxing out DJ Weathers there. That's something you have to be aware of. Longer shot, longer rebound. And St. Mary's, a whole bunch of gold jerseys just caught under the rim that time. Alexander defensing on Felipe. Another three-pointer. This one way off. And another offensive rebound for the Javelinas. That's three already in the first five minutes of this game. The shot clock did not reset, though. That one swatted out of play. <laughs> Look out there in the first row, Isaiah doing it on offense, showing he has the stoutness to do it on D as well. Three seconds on the shot clock. And we'll have a substitution for the Javelinas. Don Thomas will check in. This one floated up around him. Not anywhere near the rim, shot clock violation, and that's what you like to see out of the timeout by the Rattlers, a solid 35 on defense. Isaiah Matthews with that rejection earlier, and it clearly had an effect on that second shot opportunity as it had no chance at the basket. Good defense there by St. Mary's, and Isaiah must be feeling pretty good. We've seen him through the first couple of games wearing that protective mask, first time we're seeing him without one, and he's done well thus far as that entry pass is taken away. Yeah, you can see him asking for the ball to be passed to Witt. That way that Witt could pass it to him. 
As that one's stolen away. Javelina's 24 on the shot clock. Don Thomas, this one mishandled Witt all over him right now, but knocked the ball loose, so Thomas has his dribble once again. He falls down, Witt being a pest. Witt hitting the floor, and the foul is called. Oh, Witt tried to get down to force the jump ball, but they got him for the foul instead. Marvin a bit over-aggressive there. Good hard-nosed defending, but just a bit too much as he's called for his first personal foul and the first team foul against the Rattlers in this game. Kristen Miner checking into the game for the first time. J.J. Bolton will go and take a seat. This one put up, left hand. Matthews there for the rebound. Feels like we've been saying his name all night. Here's Benny to Alexander, the big man running the floor and drawing the foul. Well done there by Benny and Alexander playing a nice two-man game. Alexander able to recover and draw the foul as he'll head to the line to shoot two. And it is a very nice stable of big men this year for the Rattlers. They have a bunch of experience down there, Thomas, Matthews, and then Alexander as well. Uh, very, very good in the paint for St. Mary's this year is the first free throw off. The second one off as well. Matthews trying to grab the board, unsuccessful. It was Bailey who came down with it. Here's Thomas bringing it up the floor against Witt. The crossover into the paint, a bit mishandled. This one, oh, the foul called there on Matthews. So it appears that they're gonna get him for getting him a little bit with the body. It looked clean up top, but it has to be cleaned down low as well. And now another stable of the good big men coming in at the, at the break. Joe Monroe will look to check in. Here's Felipe at the line. Joe Monroe, a redshirt senior from San Antonio Stevens. A high energy player coming off the bench and Look for him to provide a spark both offensively and defensively. You can't go wrong with either Matthews or Monroe when you switch the two of them out. As the Rattlers now on the offensive as both free throws were missed. Here's Witt for three and it goes. Marvin Witt swelling the lead once again. The Havelinas need a timeout. We'll take the break with them. 13 to eight, for, 13 to five for the Rattlers. so much to celebrate in Division II, but we're especially proud of our commitment to make a win. Division II student athletes have led a senior to raise funds and help grant wishes of children with life-threatening medical conditions. Three million dollars have been raised, and hundreds of children's wishes have been granted. We play hard, we work hard, and we support others in need. Why? It's simple. Because we care. Quick break right there, a little 20 second timeout and we're back 13 to five, the Rattlers lead here. As it looks like uh, <laughs> they gave the wrong three to the other team and as you can tell, everyone is aware but the scoreboard operator, unfortunately. <laughs> as we get ready to resume back to play, 13.35 remaining in this first half. Looks like Witt will be picking up Thomas the whole way down the floor. And I think this is one of the areas where Witt is kind of undervalued. He is a, uh, for lack of a better word, a pest on uh, the defensive end. As he see him punch the ball away there. Witt, one-on-one -on -one here at the other end. The, he puts it up and puts it in. Good body control there by Witt and a good heads-up pass by Miner on the assist. Defense creating offense for St. Mary's. And right on cue, Marvin Witt. Sparking this Rattler run as St. Mary's active hands and Monroe able to alter that shot there. Rattlers now on the run. Here's Benny dribbling left hand. They're going to look for Monroe and oh, a bit out of his reach. Witt tries to get in the way there, but he'll draw the block, but effectively stops the fast break. So a good foul to take there. High energy from the Rattlers here throughout this first part of the first half so. as they lead by 10. 
Bryce Smith will now check in for Witt, his second foul. A good amount of substitutions going on here, so we'll go on ahead and refresh who's on the floor for both sides. Don Thomas, Troy Jones, Jamar Goodwin, and Jordan Jar in on for the Javelina side, along with Dwan Wright. They have the wrong number up there, so I had to look on the floor. Here's Wright hoisting up a three. That's no good. Smith not able to come up with it. And then on the Rattler side of things, Bryce Smith, Kristen Miner, Joe Monroe, Justin Alexander, and Marvin Benny. Benny yet to take a break in this uh, early stages of this game. This one put up by Jones. It hits all sides of the rim and goes in. Good move by Jones down low as he was able to create a shot utilizing the pump fake as finally the Javelina is able to stop this Rattler run. Yeah, that's the first bucket they put up since the media timeout at least. They were stuck on that five for quite a while. Here's Benny, and they're going to get a little bit too much contact there by Don Thomas. As we see another Rattler substitution coming up. Jiminy Gibbons will be coming in. But first, a media timeout as we're underneath that 12-minute mark. 15-7, the Rattlers lead here on the Rattler Network. your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. Welcome back, Rattler fans. 15 to 7. St. Mary's in the lead. Givens just fresh into the game. St. Mary's with a fresh 35 on the shot clock. So they'll inbound it into Minor and give it back to Givens now. Smith loses a handle on that one, and it's last touched by a Javelina player. Is it just me or is Givens wearing his continuing the heritage shirt underneath his jersey? You can see the little patch that's uh, usually on the arm sleeve right there. <laughs> of course, these Rattlers very involved in the community. Smith at the top, 20 seconds on the clock. Up to Givens now. Givens, a dribble. Back up to Givens at the top. St. Mary's not really doing much this offensive possession. Alexander now, and that one thrown a bit too hard, and Alexander not able to handle it. And Rattlers just kind of looked out of sync on that offensive possession. And give credit to the Javelinas on that exchange right there. Their defense really tightening up as Givens is charged with the personal. But in addition to that, the Rattlers, one of their bread and butter go-to plays on the offensive end is feeding the post and they haven't had much success able to feed Monroe and Alexander and Matthews down low although Isaiah has had some success in the early going. This one drove in and uh, comes up short and air ball and Monroe will take the board. Gibbons bringing it up the floor. This one hoisted up for three, no good, off the rim. Good attempt there by Miner. Brought up the floor, popped at the free throw line, no good. No one boxed out, a Havelina player and an easy two points there for Jar. Four or five offensive rebounds against the Rattlers have 
really spoiled some good defensive possessions so far. Here's Miner up top to Monroe. Givens now looking for Alexander. Instead, he swings it back to Smith. Alexander still fighting for his possession. He'll get it now. The hook shot. And that one just a little bit off the mark. The board cleared by Jones. And that was the first time in a while the Rattlers were able to get the ball in the post. But if you saw on that play, Alexander, he was pushed far from where he actually wanted to be as he'll take a seat. And Ryan Thomas will enter. But right now, after that quick spurt, St. Mary's trying to regain that mojo that they had earlier on. Tine checking into the game as Thomas will take a seat. And it might just be an effect of a couple of new guards in the game right now. Givens and Miner still picking up the system, per se. As that one mishandled, bad pass from Smith. Monroe not able to handle. Here's Atine now, left free throw line extended. Calling for the screen, he'll get it. Atine into the lane, and a blocking foul called on Joe Monroe. Joe sliding into position just a little bit too late, and those very tough calls right there, and so it'll be two free throws for Atine. And that was probably a case of Monroe not getting there in time, as you mentioned, sliding in. And as Atine elevated, that was when Monroe kind of established his position. He needed to establish that position prior to Atine elevating as Ooh. he's short on that first attempt. A bit of a hitch there. Yeah, it might have been the scream in the crowd or... Uh. S something reminiscent of Charles Barkley swing. <laughs> I was thinking the same exact <laughs> thing. 924 remaining in the first half. Atine. And let's clarify, not Charles Barkley's jump shot, but his golf swing. <laughs> I thought you were going to say his uh, his swing, like his punch that he threw at Shaq that one time. <laughs> Man. Uh, here's Miner right now, top of the key. Gives it to Thomas out there. Back to Miner, they're looking for Monroe. The pass deflected, but finds its destination nonetheless. Monroe had to give up his position, though. Thomas didn't look ready for that pass, received it anyway. Back to Givens now. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Bryce Smith, he'll have to force one up. That one, oh! The home touch, the friendly bounce. Bryce Smith gets that one down. St. Mary's doubling up the Javelinas yet again. And Bryce Smith getting the benefit of a friendly rim. Oh! Thomas erases that layup attempt there by Jar, but is called for the foul. That'll be Thomas's first personal foul. And by the looks of things, the referee is really letting these guys play. And the last game on Sunday, St. Mary's really struggled with foul trouble, especially heading into the later stages of the game as they were able to put away Midwestern State. Jar making the first one. Now looking for the second. And that one goes in as well. Jar, one of the players averaging in double figures, he averages 10.7 per, per a contest. Bryce Smith bringing it up the floor against Goodwin. Now dishes it off to Givens. The double team there as the Javelin is looking to apply pressure. Thomas now with the ball, but looking a bit like a duck out of water out there on the perimeter. Still plenty of time for St. Mary's to get something going. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Givens to Thomas. Here's Miner putting one up. No good. And Matthews able to put it in, but a loose ball foul called on him. <laughs> Amazing tip there by Isaiah. Amazing indeed, but was called for the over the back as he kind of got a little bit of a boost on that tip attack. Well, it'll be in the bonus now for the Javelinas, so back to the line once again is Jar. Few 
two substitutions for the Rattlers. Matthews will come out of the game for Alexanders. Matthews, he just picked up his second foul. And then also for the Rattlers, Cameron Pierce, the sharpshooter, will check into the game for Miner. One and one, the first one goes, so we'll have the second one. Jordan Jar, an excellent free throw shooter on the season, averaging over 84% from the charity stripe as he's able to knock both of the one and one. Miner looking to inbound to Givens. As the full court pressure continues yet again, Pierce will have to come back. And the full court press was something St. Mary struggled with in the game against Midwestern State Sunday afternoon. And it allowed for the Mustangs to get back into the contest, though fortunately for the Rattlers, time ran out and they were up ahead as Thomas called for the offensive foul, swinging the elbow. And another turnover for St. Mary's as Coach Zelznak clearly upset with a call. 7.41 remain here in the first half. Rattlers still leading by five. We'll take a timeout. Stay tuned. More upcoming. You are watching Rattler Basketball on the Rattler Network. Looking for these? You drive buzzed. It could be one very expensive ride. First, you got to make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. And welcome back, Rattler fans. 18 to 13 the score as the Rattlers leading here in the first half. And you and I were discussing the uh, the effects of the full court pressure during the timeout, how uh, it can kind of make you play a little bit frantic, a little uncomfortable, and that might be the reason behind the Rattlers slowing down here in the later stages of the first half. And as you mentioned during that break, it disrupts the rhythm of your offense, St. Mary's Earlier on, we're able to bring the ball up as, oh, good interior passing there as Jar is able to lay it in. The Rattler lead trimmed to three as we still see this press right here. And it really disrupts your ability to get into your offense instead of having the full 35 to work with. Now you're down to 20 seconds to get off a decent shot as the Rattler is finally in their offense. The shot by Binney is good. And the Rattlers, in order to beat that defense, they brought it in some of their starters yet again. Bolton on the floor, Binney in there as well, along with Pierce around the perimeter. And then rounding it out with Joe Monroe and Justin Alexander, two quality bigs off the bench. And guys like Marvin Binney that are able to create their own shots can really help as Monroe, active hands, able to disrupt the 10 A's drive. Hitting the Diving floor. for the ball. And good job by the Rattlers. Benny first to his feet. St. Mary's looking to push in transition. Benny hanging in the air. And he'll draw the blocking foul and go to the line for two. And good aggressive play there by Marvin Benny. From Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Benny has done a splendid job so far this season for the St. Mary's Rattlers as he's second on the team averaging 8.8 .8 points per game to go along with 4.8 rebounds per game as MB is able to hit the first. Couple of substitutions for the Javelinas. Let's reset who's on the floor. Felipe in there along with Thomas. Benny good on the second as well. Very reliable free throw shooter, Benny. Weathers is also in the game along with Jar and Goodwin for the Javelinas. 
Here's Goodwin, the spin move, getting towards the paint. Long arms, able to finish over Bolton, the nice lay-in for two. Benny now, bringing it up the floor. Benny trying to insert to Alexander. He tried to touch pass to Bolton, but good hands there. Goodwin came up with it. And it was a case of nice idea, but just better defense. This one put up. And Alexander contested, but didn't box out. Another offensive rebound. This one for three by Jar. No good. Benny clears the boards. The big man expanding his range. Nearly got that to fall as Benny elevates. Unable to get the foul call, but St. Mary is able to reset. And that's yet another entry pass that goes unanswered for the St. Mary's Rattlers. They have really struggled getting the ball into the post. Yeah, Bolton and Alexander not on the same page there. The thing is, Bolton tried to bullet pass in there, and sometimes with those big men, you want to put a little bit more finesse on the ball. That one was rocketed in there. Thomas bringing it up the floor now for the Javelinas. Swings it over to Weathers. This one wide open three for Goodwin, no good. And Pierce will corral the rebound. Here's Benny now. Benny so far, six points on the night. He's actually the only Rattler on the floor that's put anything on the score sheet. And he picked up his dribble there, and it forces a turnover. Two on one. Bolton, though, able to come up with it. A bit of a lazy pass right there. And here's Benny now. Over to Pierce, looking for Monroe. Good help, defense, and the blocking foul, and one called as Jones not able to get into position there, and Monroe finishes. Joe Monroe, great move. His first move over his right shoulder as he's able to elude Jones, who is trying to draw the foul. Good call there by the referee as Monroe looks to capitalize on the three-point play. And he does so, Monroe able to take advantage there. Joe Monroe, another one of the experienced players for this team. As you see Thomas bringing it up the floor, out to Goodwin, up top now to Felipe. Felipe against Monroe, the power move and a foul called there. Looks like they got Justin Alexander on that one. Or as on Monroe. <laughs> 45, 54, it looks so similar. <laughs> so it looks like substitutions will be coming in for both sides. 426 left to play. As look at this Rattler squad, a substitution. Monroe will check out of the game. Hudson McAshen coming in now. Hudson, redshirt freshman. This one put up and good. It's the one and one. For Justin Felipe. Hudson Makishan, who just checked into the game. A native of New Orleans, Louisiana. Attended Newman High School. Joe, you're an avid football fan. Oh, why do you think that sounds a bit familiar? Uh, can only think. But <laughs> <laughs> that is the same high school that the Mannings actually attended back in their heyday. That's day. right. Cooper, Peyton, and Eli. Well known from Newman High School in Louisiana as Bolton is rejected on that shot attempt. Possession will stay with the Rattlers, 15 on the shot clock. Yeah, good play there by Goodwin. Benny will go ahead and inbound. This one there, Benny has to get it in and does so. Now Benny, no one guarding him. He'll take the shot for three and no good. A bit of a defensive lapse there by the Javelinas, but Benny not able to take advantage. I think Marvin was surprised that he had all that space and enough space there for Don Thomas to drain the three as now the Rattler lead is cut in half. They lead by three with three and a half left to play. This one sent out to Pierce. That one up to McAshen. 
Benny now with the ball. Benny driving in. And a blocking foul called once again. That one will go against Weathers. You see Benny trying to talk to uh, McAshen, <laughs> make sure they're on the same page. But first immediate timeout. Should be plenty of time for them to get together at that point. Rattlers still lead 25 to 22 with 323 remaining in the first half of play. And welcome back, Rattler fans. 25-22, the Rattlers in the lead. Marvin Benny to the line for a couple of more free throws. Already six on the night for Marvin. So he's playing quite well for himself. First one hoisted up, and that one does everything but go through the rim. Benny now two of three on free throws on the night. And second one goes through. Marvin shooting 40% from the field, 75% from the line. Rattler lead now at two possessions. Is this one swung around the perimeter. Benny doing a good job defensively against Thomas. And now it's put out towards Weathers. Weathers working the pick and roll to Jones. He misses the bunny. Offensive rebound, not able to go in. Everyone fighting for the board. And it comes out as gold ball. St. Mary's very fortunate. Their defense had a bit of a lapse as Jones had the easy bunny layup, but instead was unable to finish. And now we see the Javelinas now in their full court press. Bolton able to bring it across the timeline as it killed about 11 seconds off the Rattlers shot clock. 18 now left as Alexander at the top of the key. And another bad pass by St. Mary's. They just haven't been connecting on these passes so far today. They don't seem on the same page. See them just stone handing a couple of them. And those turnovers, they really come back to bite you. St. Mary's, they're already very deep into that turnover column. Good defense though, Nick Ashen though, and oh, looks like a call, a foul called against Marvin Benny there. He's telling the referee he was just hustling. Marvin pleading his case with the official, but to no avail as Rattlers have 10 team fouls it'll be a double bonus situation for the Javelinas two free throws coming up for Taylor and Taylor able to send that one home substitution will be for the shooter 26 to 23 Rowler fans we remind you to Oh, that's unexcusable us, there <laughs> we remind you to check us out on social media follow us on Twitter under the handle at St. Mary's Rattlers. You can also follow us on Instagram under the same handle at St. Mary's Rattlers. Also, like us on Facebook while you're at it. Facebook.com forward slash St. Mary's Rattlers. And for all your up-to-date statistics, videos, and news on all your favorite St. Mary's teams, log on to RattlerAthletics.com. Marvin Benny bringing the ball up the floor. 
That last offensive rebound, number 11 for the Javelina so far in this game, and another turnover. Bringing it up the floor, putting it up, no good. Jones, though, the offensive board, and he's fouled, and he'll go to the line as that one goes against Alexander. That'll be his first of the game, two shots. St. Mary's are really hurting themselves, shooting themselves in the foot so far this game. 12 offensive rebounds allowed, now 11 turnovers as well. And it looks like if the Javelinas are going to win this game, the free throw line is going to be what carries them through as they have cut this Rattler lead down to two now. Miner checking into the game as McAshen will check out. I like this lineup for the Rattlers. They're going small. Bolton in there at the four. That one off. Bolton grabs the rebound. He'll handle the ball, bring it up the floor, and eventually dish off to Benny. As you mentioned, JJ playing the power forward position as Benny tried to scissor his way through, and he is able to draw the foul. A one and one situation coming up for Marvin. Marvin uh, talking to Bolton there before he goes to the line. <laughs> They're making sure that they're good on their screen and rules, it looks like. One in one situation, ball will be live here. As that one just off the rim. I think I might have jinxed him. <laughs> Jones comes down with the rebound. Here's Thomas bringing it up the floor. Thomas setting things up, 25 on the shot clock for the Javelinas. Uh, Alexander fell down. Jones lost the ball. Pierce now pushing up the floor. Cameron Pierce, he'll slow it down. Shell it off to Benny. Bolton now with the ball. Bolton off to Miner, looking for Alexander. Miner now to Benny. Benny to Bolton, wide open three. He'll drive it in instead. Hanging and scoring is Bolton. Good decision there by J.J. Bolton swooping his way to the basket, and that's one of the advantages of having a guy like Bolton at the power forward position. He provides that advantage of quickness and speed as he's called for the push in the back with 45 seconds left to play in half number one. St. Mary's, a lot of fouls committed thus far in the game as well as uh, <laughs> Alexander taking it upon himself to make sure uh, that the court is dry. Two shots here for Dwan Wright. First one up and good. Wright averaging 6.8 points on the year to go along with 3.2 rebounds. This one up and off the front of the rim and Pierce able to grab the board. Benny now. 35 on the game clock, 25 on the shot clock. Ball handed off to Bolton. They'll look for Alexander. Shoveled now to Miner. Back to Bolton. Good entry pass, but Alexander not quite able to hang on to it. Good defense there by Jones as he knocks it away. Checking into the game now is Elliot Taylor. He'll come in for Jones. Benny orchestrating the Rattlers. Throw it up to Pierce. Cameron Pierce. Now over to Bolton. Looks like a zone defense possibly. Three on the shot clock. Two. Open shot for Miner and he gets it to go. It did look like a zone defense out of the Javelinas. The Rattlers able to catch him in rotation. One second on the game clock. Miner comes up with a steal. And St. Mary's will go into the break with a 31-25 lead. Six points the advantage for the Rattlers. Partner, St. Mary's, they looked a little shaky at times. I think if they clean up the turnovers and get those and don't allow any more offensive rebounds, 
This one's to be won for St. Mary's. What were your opinions heading into the half? An excellent start for St. Mary's. A bit shaky, as you mentioned, but they were able to come out of the first half with a six-point advantage, 31-25, led by Isaiah Matthews, who is three for three from the field in seven minutes of play as six points. Rattlers led in scoring by the Marvins, Marvin Binney and Marvin Witt, each with seven apiece. An impressive performance, but as you mentioned, partner, turnovers a big factor here in the first half. Let's see if St. Mary's could clean that up as we head into the second half. Well, a quick 15 intermission from us as we will go on ahead and take a quick break. Rattler fans, stick with us. The second half coming up soon. 